For those of you who are wondering why we didn't just leave the aluminium bear, our second campaign has started with a bang. We Game playing. A lot cleaner. All right, so we had the uh, welder's apprentice out for two days and he cleaned all of the pitting. Um, best $40 we have ever spent, that is for sure. He worked really, really hard. He was a young fella, like maybe 17, 18. And um, yeah, he did a really good job. So now that's done, we can start the epoxy process. So basically, um, because we've already got the plate welded underneath, we don't have to be so concerned about um, any of these holes going through. So we're going to kind of do it like we did in the tanks where we epoxy um, all the divots to make it nice and smooth. And then we're also going to look at any of the slightly deeper holes. We'll probably look at doing like a patch of fiberglass as well, just to, you know, be extra secure kind of thing. And then we'll do a couple of layers of Emmerlock paint we're hoping to get which is really strong and sticks very, very well to corroded metal. So um, even if we've missed a few spots, we've got a much better chance of it sticking very good. And then she'll be ready for the new engine. We spot tested an area to make sure our one year old G-Flex epoxy would still set well. Turns out it did, and we were able to start treating the entire engine compartment. All right, you can see there, we have filled in the deeper pitted areas. Some of them have a layer of fiberglass. If they were really getting kind of deeper, even though we do have the aluminium welds underneath, just for added protection, but most of it was just filling in the hole. So we have a nice smooth surface to paint. For those of you who are wondering why we didn't just leave the aluminium bare, um, that is a really good option if you don't have much corrosion. But because we have actual pits, what happens is when things like a little bit of oil or coolant spills or you get a little bit of salt water entering that area, you know, from the dripless or something like this, um, it accumulates in those corners, which means it accumulates in the pits and then you get like an electrolyte solution and it just gets eaten further and further. So if you have nice smooth aluminium and you can keep it really nice and clean, leaving alum aluminium bare is a much better option. But in our case with the pitting, we kind of have to cover it because if we don't, more and more stuff just accumulates in it and eats it away further and further. And it's already one of the weakest areas since it's already got some corrosion. So that's why we filled it all in and we'll paint it. So um, it's a really hard area to keep clean under the engine. You can't get under there properly to make sure it's 100% dry. So this way we just know it's protected. While our epoxy was setting, we were off on another vaccine campaign in the southernmost barrio of Puerto Madero. Driving along the Malacón, you can see at one time money was invested into making this town a tourist attraction, but unfortunately a large fire destroyed the newly built complex and since then this is what it looks like. We have previously had campaigns at the veterinary clinic in the centre of town and our first mobile campaign in Via del Sol in the northernmost area of Puerto Madero. And now we were heading to the barrio of Emiliano Zabata.
You may remember Alejandra from previous episodes when she worked with us and we helped treat her porcupine attacked dog. Alejandra lives here in Puerto Madero and is in the final year of her veterinary studies in Tapachula. It is our hope that by having Alejandra involved in these campaigns, we can help set her up to eventually run them herself one day. Working with a local woman also helps build trust between us and the community, and of course, improves the communication skills. Our second campaign has started with a bang. We've already had a lot of animals in, so it's been a good location. Um, yeah. We're very excited for another day of vaccinating. We're very lucky to have Alejandra, a veterinary student, helping us because uh, we've been busy. <laughs> We were once again providing free vaccinations to protect dogs against rabies, parvovirus, distemper and other common diseases, as well as providing parasite treatment medication. By vaccinating a large number of dogs, we are reducing the ability of these viruses to spread, which in turn reduces infection rates. Not only are we protecting the dogs, but also improving community health by protecting against zoonotic diseases like rabies. It is not uncommon for the local kids to be the ones responsible for the care of their dogs, a role they all take very seriously, with some of the young guys bringing us families of puppies. How many dogs do those boys bring? How many have we had? No, those dogs just then, those boys. Oh, they brought in four. Well, five, including that one. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to talk because I'm here. They say the vocals. Ah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. We would like to take this time to say a big thank you to our patrons. Without them, these campaigns would not be possible. Although once-off donations do help us with our animal work, we are able to make a bigger difference when we can plan ahead. The monthly donations from patrons provide the budget for vet tales to plan, organise and execute larger scale campaigns such as this one. And these campaigns are the ones that have the longer lasting effects within the community. While many YouTubers offer their patrons material merchandise in return for their support, for our patrons, knowing they've made a difference in a dog's life and in turn made a family very happy is more valuable than a t-shirt. And for that, we are very, very grateful. We truly believe that we all have the power to make a difference and make the world a better place. Buenas tardes. Aquí estamos hablando por. Sí, no que. Sí, 
After a few hours of busy vaccinations, we were wrapping up with our final patient and began to pack up. The lovely woman who let us use her front yard as our base of operations also gifted us this beautiful hand-painted gourd from the mountain regions of Chappas. We are so grateful for all of the local support we've had to make these campaigns possible. Alright, so the engine has been collected, so it is on its way. Um, in the meantime, all we've got to do really is finish prepping the engine compartment. So we finished our lovely epoxy. You can see it looks pretty good. We've got fiberglass over the kind of really bad spots, but luckily there wasn't many. Um, and then all the other holes have been filled. And then we're going to sand this and paint it with Emmalock. Emmalock is a two-part epoxy paint that bonds very well to aluminium and other metals. You may remember us using it in the water tanks. We now have a beautiful clean painted engine compartment ready to receive the new engine. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you'd like to help us continue our mission to sail and save animals, become a patron or follow the links below to see more ways to help us. Until next time, stay chuffed everybody.